My name is Nick and I fell for a lemon of a used RV. It looks good from the outside. Now on, if something goes wrong with this camper, we're just going to cut it off. But the inside tells a whole different story and I want to share that story with you so you can avoid the costly mistakes that I made when I bought this thing. All right, so come on in. You got to see this, right? The whole story starts back in January when we were going to Quartzsite. Didn't even notice it at the time, but I broke two rules when it comes to towing. One was I just plain overloaded the Cougar, and then the second one is I put all the weight in the back of the camper, which as we were starting to go down I-20 or so going through Texas, I was thinking, man, this thing's kind of squirrely, but then it wasn't until we were passing like a semi and then coming over this bridge and we just like start swerving all over the place. Oh man, dude, that was super scary. And all of a sudden the back, the trailer starts swaying pretty hard and I'm so like, So basically, oh, no. we overloaded the camper and we were doing stuff with it that we just shouldn't have been doing. At that point, I'm like, we gotta get something that will work. Had we had a toy hauler, just roll the racks in, we'd be done. I could roll the racks out, roll them into a show. That's kind of the way I'm leaning. So I'm gonna do these shows all the time. We're the family behind NC Connect. We need to have something that can haul stuff, that we can live in, and that can be safe when we're doing it. So we landed on a fifth wheel toy hauler. Now, would you believe that this is actually the second lemon we ran into while we were trying to find a good use camper? That was it. And uh, we are walking away. About two days after getting home from Quartzsite, I found a camper in Virginia about 10 hours away from our house. I called the lady on the phone, and she said her husband kept it in immaculate condition. So I was like, all right, boys, let's go. Let's go check it out. I had a check in hand, and I was ready to buy it. And 10 hours later, we showed up, and I started doing something that, in hindsight, I really shouldn't have done, my own camper inspection. But Which, in this case, it actually worked fine because this camper had a problem that was so obvious. While I was tapping around on the outside to see if I could try to find any rot, I got to the section of the slide out, and I was like, pff, pff, and it pretty much went through. And it's like the whole front corner of that slide was just totally rotten, and the, oh, the people didn't even know. It felt kind of bad. But at the same time, it's like I was 10 hours away from home and I really wanted this camper, but I was like, there's no way I'm going to want to deal with this. Yeah, I don't know about that. So I passed on it. And when I got in the truck and started driving away, I was bummed to say the it least. It was a deal breaker for me, to be honest. The whole rest of the camper looked great. Immediately when I walked in, I could smell it. Yeah, there was a camper smell, but there was a kind of a mold So smell I made there. another huge mistake. I told Nate in the passenger seat, dude, get on the computer, get on RV Trader, and find another Valor. We're going to get one, like, tomorrow, right? So he ended up finding this camper that we're in right now, and I called the lady up on the phone while we were driving home from Virginia and set up a an appointment to meet her the next day. So we ended up driving all the way back home, got home at about 2 in the morning, and then got up the next day drove another three hours to like the tennessee alabama border we met this lady at a storage place here and there's the camper right over there and, and i again it. started doing my self-inspection and everything actually looked really good like the whole shell looked good uh, i tapped around and find any rod on the outside now the funny part is while we're doing all of this driving i was actually shooting a video on how we do it as far as doing your own camper and self inspection and part of the video i explained about how i'm tapping around looking for rotten wood and checking the drivetrain and all of that stuff but then i was talking oh. about making sure to hook the camper up to utilities like electric and water so you can make sure that everything works. I think at this point I was just so excited that the camper wasn't totally rotten and falling apart that I completely disregarded that part because it was at a storage facility we couldn't hook it up. Everything under here looks much, much better than the last one. But looking back on that, I really end up paying for that big time, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the story. So anyway, shook the lady's hand, says, yep, we'll buy it. We end up coming back the next day with Luke and Lojo. We actually had a pretty uneventful drive home and even camped in it on the way home. Now, it was pretty cold in Tennessee at the time, so we didn't hook up like water and sewer and all that stuff. And since it was cold when we got home, we really just kind of parked it and didn't even touch it until we were getting ready to go on our next show. So since it was cold and we couldn't really do much to the camper, I decided to start getting our show set up ready, right? So I got these racks and I wanted to like create our perfect boot system that we could just roll right into the Valor and then roll it out, which we did. When we went to Dallas, we pulled this thing right up to the convention center. We rolled our racks out, it was so slick. We rolled it right into our spot, just set it there. We had our stuff set up like in 20 minutes or so. It was, it was perfect, it was exactly what I was hoping and this camper would allow us to do. You guys hop in, let me check the camper. It's still a pretty sweet camper though. All right, so that went just about 
I mean, no. That went as well as I thought it would. But at that point, the peel of the lemon started coming off. So after we set up in Dallas, we were camping at this really nice spot south of town. Uh, I mean, it was like had all of this stuff. It was super nice, had nice level concrete pads, full hookups, the works, right? So when we got there, I go to full hookup to probably the highest pressure water hookup that I've ever seen in my life. In our quest for a nice new camper, the last owner of the camper did not winterize it. So I heard like so a, now like we a have jet this. like going from the back behind that instrument panel and I look back there and there's water just going everywhere. So I quickly like shut off all the water, grab like a bunch of towels, start mopping everything up and in my mind I was like, I will never buy a used camper again. Ever. Ever. So anyway, I take the thing apart, look in the back, there's a T fitting right behind that instrument panel that's just like spraying water. And at this point the boys are coming out and they're like, Dad, Dad, what's going on? And I was like, we need to go to the store right now luckily there was a lowe's and a home depot like three miles away so we hop in the truck head down there now if you've ever worked on a camper you know the stuff that they have in a camper isn't like standard parts it's not good they don't have it uh oh we're not gonna find anything i don't see <sighs> deep breath deep breath i couldn't find this tea anywhere in either Lowe's or Home Depot. The closest thing I could find was this underground sprinkler stuff of, of PVC plastic. I had to like find stuff to like put something together. Oh! Nathan, wanna demonstrate what's going on here? <laughs> oh, dad's... <laughs> so we got the parts, drove all the way back to the Valor, start putting things together, and I'm like fixing one thing, turn the water back on, I'm finding another leak, and then fixing that thing, and then turn the water back on. And I did this for like hours till like midnight that night, just trying to work and get the water from stop leaking all over the place. The shower leaked, the toilet leaked, just a bunch of stuff. So I think I got it all fixed, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna hit the sack. But then little did I know I'd find something else the next morning. So when I woke up, I was actually feeling pretty good about my fixes, and I decided to go outside and look for that clear sign of leaking you know any water spots on the nice concrete pad and so I go to where the water hooks up and it's like completely dry and I'm like yeah man I got it all sweet but then I started like glancing back towards the back but part then I of the look camera. back towards the the black poop thing right and it's dripping all right no problem let me just push these in boom 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 I push them all in and I look and it's still dripping one of the handles there is not completely closing can you guess which one it is do you think it's the gray tank here do you think it's the gray tank here? Or do you think it happens to be the 33% chance that the black tank would be leaking because that's not gross, right? And all of a sudden, I was one of those guys, right? With the nasty, leaky camper. And here I am outside like, dude, what am I gonna do? And I'm looking around and looking for anybody else's camper, like hoping that they have a spot under there too. But no, I was the only one. People were driving by and I'm sure they're seeing this gigantic brown spot and they're looking over and I'm like, Good morning. I'm out pushing all the levers in the cockpit trying to get it to stop and no matter what I do it seemed like it's just making it worse right and so like drip 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 then I was like let's just grab the hose and we'll hook it up and it can drip right into the sewer right and so I go looking for the hose and of course it's not there right I left it in the cougar so long story short go to Walmart get the poop hose hook it all up and then head down to the show and I had a good day at the show and it was pretty nice in Dallas at the time which was good because like the weather was good so I could be outside working on everything and it actually got pretty warm that day so when we got back to the camper, it was pretty hot in here. So we decided, like, let's turn on these three great giant air conditioners. It is kind of warm. How's the air conditioner working? I can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it? Yeah. Oh, good. Then maybe it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Feel it? It's not working. That is not cold air. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? That's not cold air. Oh, my goo goo pants. That's cool, low. I don't, I don't know how much more of this I can take. I am beside myself, to be honest. I turned it on a good five minutes ago. It should be cold. It was at this point, though, where I was kind of upset and I felt like sending the lady a message. So I know, right? Buyer beware. I totally assumed with all the problems with this thing. I was really kind in my message that I sent to her. Basically, I said, look, by not winterizing this thing, you really caused me a lot of problems. And just looking to see if she would maybe be okay with helping me out with the air conditioner, because I kind of have a thought 
that maybe she knew about this. She lived in this for a whole year. So I sent her a couple messages, but I never, ever got a response back, ever. I guess that's how it goes. So anyway, Dallas show gets done. We packed everything up and we dripped our way out of that really nice campground and, and all the way back home. Now, my idea was to try to find one of those shutoffs, right? The master that you can just stick on there and just shut it off. But for the life of me, I could not find one anywhere near where we were. And by the time we got through Dallas, I looked back and it had stopped dripping. So I was like, sweet, maybe this thing like fixed itself. But of course that wasn't the case and we'll get to that in just a second here. So we travel home, fast forward a couple weeks, we're getting ready for our show in Bakersfield, California. You know you're going a long way when the overview picture of your trip has the curvature of the earth in it. <laughs> and this show, man, was super fun. We got to camp on location. So we were there, got to check out like a monster truck show and everything. It was a really, really fun weekend. But at the end of this weekend, when I go to dump, I then remembered, oh man, I hope this thing was actually fixed, right? Go to leave yesterday and I said, I gotta dump the tanks. I go take the cap off and guess what happens? Just like, oh, just as much black tank stuff as you could think about comes out of the hole. And it's like, not just water. All right, so I'm gonna stop there, right? Cause I don't want, I, I think you know where I'm going. With and this, then before so. you know it, I am again, one of those guys that is like making a mess all over the place. So I try to hook it up as fast as I can to, to minimize the splashage all over the place, get it hooked up, dump it. And then of course, you know, after it dumped, I put the cat back on, we're back to the drip, drip. We were now driving from Bakersfield and we were gonna do an overnight at Quartzsite. So we were dripping all the way through California. Sorry about that, California guys. This story's kind of been nasty enough, so I'm not gonna like go into the details of what I tried to do to remedy the situation at Bakersfield. All I can tell you is that when we got to Quartzsite, we actually did find one of those shutoff valves and I did my best to try to put it on there as environmentally friendly as possible. So here we are, right? I'd love to be able to say, well, that was all that was wrong with this camper, uh, but no. From now on, if something goes wrong with this camper, we're just gonna cut it off. Well, y'all have seen enough of that. See you later, Dad. There's been a lot more things, like the rotten floor that right, we found. The floor, okay. See that right there? Squishy. So are you wishing that you had bought the one with the puffiness on the slides? Or is this, is this better? This is better. Oh yeah. But that, this isn't cool at the same time. This is not, oh my goodness. Look at all that Whoa. Oh man, there's like standing water in there. Wait, is there? Oh my goodness, there is actually standing water in there. That whole area was rotten to the core, but luckily no it was just an afternoon fix. And then the slides, right? When I was looking at it with the lady, she said, let's put out the main sign. She did, and there's sound came from it that was like, un I've never heard a sound anything like just the loudest sound I've ever heard. And I thought to myself, well, that's all right, right? I can deal with slides, that's no big deal. Oh, Plus it go. went out, right? So it actually worked. We got it out. Well, it wasn't easy. What? It wasn't easy. Forgot to check all the cables. I should have checked the cables, but totally forgot. This side here, one's frayed up there. Uh, and the other side one's broken. Yesterday, we spent the whole afternoon fixing the oh motor, fixing the cables. What a mess. What a mess, he says. Look at your mess. Luckily, it was an afternoon fix, and we got that taken care of. So I think what happened was I became okay with knowing that I might have to fix some of the smaller things in this camper. And I think at this point, I think I'm okay with that because, to be honest, I saved a whole bunch of money by buying a used yeah. camper. I still feel like I don't ever want to do it again. So I think at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with where we're at. And I think now we're at the point where we're going to do what we normally do to a camper, which is tear this thing apart and make it perfect for us. And I got some cool ideas for what we're going to do, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I thought I'd share some of my lessons with you. So the first one is definitely always, always get an inspection. I thought I could do it by myself, and I got too personally involved in it, right? I was like, I really want this camper, so I'm gonna overlook a bunch of stuff. The inspectors, they don't care, right? They're like, I wanna make sure you know everything that's wrong. And plus, like if you hear about these things called frame flex, like you're gonna wanna make sure they look into that and make sure you don't run into that. <laughs> Which is funny, because I actually have a story about frame flex that I wanna share with you too, because I'd love to get your opinion on whether I was going too fast 
or if the camper just wasn't built well enough, right? So I have a video that'll show the exact moment that I totally tweaked our frame on the other camper. Be sure to subscribe so you can see that one when I put it out. I'm interested to see what you would think with that one. Like frame flex is a thing and an inspector would be able to tell you that. Definitely get an inspection. And I think the second thing that I did was I was in a rush to get it. So try not to be in a rush. To be honest, I settled for this camper. This one didn't have the generator that I wanted. And when the lady was telling me some other things that I didn't even mention yet in this video, things like pet stains, you know, if I wasn't so much in a rush, I probably should have and would have passed on this one too. All that being said, I'm really satisfied with where we're at right now with this camper because this camper is going to be great. It's going to take some work. I know that, right? We're going to make this thing pretty sweet and I'm pretty excited about it. Like the off-grid system we're putting on here, the solar and batteries and everything. Really excited, got some big ideas and some thoughts on what I'm gonna do with that. I'd love to get your input on that as well. We're gonna be starting the convertible bunk room in the back for like when all the kids come with us and still be able to like haul stuff. So I got some really good ideas on what we wanna do with this camper. And to be honest, because it's used, I feel like I have a little bit more freedom as to what I'm gonna do, right? I don't feel bad about tearing certain things out because there's already some bad blood. So I'm like, I don't really care. And when you start with a lemon, it can only get better, right? Which leads me to my last thing here which is the name of this camper now we've never really given a name to a camper before but I think we have the perfect name for this camper you ready for it we're gonna call it lemonade because when life gives you lemons you got to make lemonade I'm excited to see the changes that's gonna come to lemonade and to see where this thing brings us because either way it's gonna be an adventure right you know what I do want you guys to do is take off the seat posts because we didn't bring any seats. We did it? No. Hey, I did all of the loading. You guys wanted seats, you guys could have brought them. You could have, like, asked? No. You could have helped me. I didn't know you were working so hard and loading everything without my help. Because I was doing work. He's doing, hey, ask him. Ask him if he brought his schoolwork this time, too. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, I forgot the seats. He forgot his schoolwork. Even the bad stuff have been an adventure and it's been a way for us to learn and grow. And so I'm looking forward to the adventures that we're gonna have with her. And I would love it if you would join us for those as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as we have lots of adventures coming up and it just won't be the same without you. I've had a great time sharing this story with you and I know you might have a story just like it. And if you have a minute, I would love to hear it. Drop it in the comments below and we can keep hanging out right here. Till next time, I'm Nick from Weekend Explore. Looking forward to that next adventure just around the corner. See you next time. It looks pretty sweet, this whole rig. It makes it look nice.